Today's Cleveland Browns report is sponsored by Mint Mobile. You are tired for overpaying for your cell phone plan, and you also want to hop on the nation's largest 5G network? Well, make the change right now by going to mintmobile.com slash chatsports. Now, I got that link for you in the comments and the description of today's show. So make sure you are stepping in and making sure that you are not overpaying for your current cell phone plan by going to mintmobile.com slash chatsports. So, the topic of today's show, Joe Wood's replacement. Now, this is premature. I will own that right now. This is not Joe Wood's replacement because he just got fired. I'm not breaking that news to you. This is if Joe Woods were to be fired or to be relieved of his duties. Never talk about another man's job. But I think there's a decent-sized contingent of Browns fans that A, want to see Woods go. B, maybe want to see what else is out there, right? What would be plan B? If something were to happen to Joe Woods and Stefanski were to make a change after the bye or something like that. So before we look at my five candidates to replace Joe Woods, I want to show this. Wow, Michael. Okay, we got to keep it composed here. I want to show this tweet from Cameron Justice. So this is being recorded during our live show on Thursday. We did a big super chat roll in. That's why I'm like taken away right now. But back on track here. Joe Wood spoke to the media on Thursday, and it went, it went. You can you can decide for yourself if it went good or great or poorly. I don't think it went all that well. I do credit him for at least going in front of the media, but I didn't like this response here. Joe Wood's on the defensive struggle. Just telling the truth, I don't worry about it. Can you? Because we are. It would be nice if you worried about it as much as we lose sleep over it here, right? I know it's a problem. Um, Excuse me. Uh, I know it's a problem right now. We're not performing well, even though we've had good stretches. It just comes with the territory. If you worry about it, it affects your decision making. He would go on to say, I promise everybody we're trying to do everything that we can to win. Right now, it's not going well in terms of the consistency in certain stretches. We're doing things, but I don't worry about it. You can't. You got to worry about it. That's your job. When you're a coordinator, you only have to focus on 11 guys. And when you're a coach, like a position coach, that number goes down to five, four, or three guys. When you are just in charge of 11, that is your baby. And you have to worry about it when things aren't going well. And giving up 238 rushing yards to the Chargers last week, who were dead last in the NFL... That should have your hair on fire. That should be sending off red alarm bells. That has to get you up and moving. Not, I don't worry about it. So with that, we're going to check out five Joe Woods replacements. If a midseason change were to happen, I think the first thing you look is internal. And that would be linebacker coach Jason Tarver. So a a coach, excuse me, who's been with the Browns since Stefanski came in in 2020, but he's got a long history in the NFL. Just looking around the defensive room, he's one of the more uh, tenured guys in the office here. So let's run through some notes I've got on on Coach Taver. Third year as the Browns linebacker coach, 19th season as an NFL coach. He has some experience as a defensive coordinator. He did it for the Raiders for three seasons. Now, to me, this would be the most logical promotion within if Joe Woods were to be relieved of his duties. Let's look at Taver's career right now. Traver's career, excuse me. He started things off in West Valley College. Then he went on to UCLA. He was a grad assistant. Then he goes up to the big leagues, right, with the Niners. Has some experience on the offensive side of things. Offensive quality control, uh, control coach running back coach. He spent five seasons as the outside linebacker coach. Then he goes to Stanford, defensive coordinator slash inside linebacker coach. Then he gets his gig with the Raiders three years as their DC. I'm not going to bother to show what he did as a Raiders DC. That was nearly a decade ago. I'm going to contradict myself later on in the show, but I don't think that's a really good or fair, accurate representation. 2015 to 2017, he goes back to the Niners working on defense. Then he goes down to Nashville. He's the D.C. for the Vanderbilt Commodores, go Vols. And for the last three years, he's been hanging out in Cleveland as the linebacker coach. So I think that would be the most logical in-house promotion. 
But I will let you guys weigh in right now. This is today's poll question. I really want to see what you guys have to say. Will Joe Woods last the entire season? Stefanski's never made a midseason fire before. Could this be the first if the defense is giving up chunks of yards and a lot of points and he feels that it is restricting his domain, the offense, from winning games? Y for yes or N for no. All right, next replacement is a bigger name. You might have heard of him. Mike Zimmer, former Minnesota Vikings head coach. We're going to run through Zimmer and talk about why I think it might be a pretty good idea to at least reach out to him and see if he'd be interested in coming over to Cleveland. But first, Mint Mobile, today's proud sponsor. I told you the top of the show about so many of their great benefits. Well, let me tell you more. Because not only are you going to be hopping on the nation's largest 5G or 4G network, whatever is easiest, easiest for you, whatever is strongest, but thanks to East, new eSIM technology, you can make the change from your own home. I said this before, but I'll say it again for the people in the back. You do not have to waste your time on a weekday or, God forbid, a weekend by going into a strip mall and making half an hour wasting time switching over to a new cell phone provider. No, you can do it from the comfort of your own home with your same phone number and your same uh, SIM card. You don't have to change anything thanks to new eSIM technology at Mint Mobile. Get started today. Monthly rates as low as $15 when you go to mintmobile.com slash chat sports. So let's get back to Mike Zimmer. He was the Vikings head coach from 2014 to 2021. A lot of experience as a D.C. Started with the Cowboys, then the Falcons for a little bit. Then he went on to the Bengals before getting the head coaching job in Minneapolis. Now, he currently is on Deion Sanders' coaching staff over at Jackson State. Evidently, those two guys are really good friends. I didn't know that, but I guess they are. So that's where Mike Zimmer is right now. Now, Mike Zimmer, when he was in Minnesota, here's how his defensive fare. There's a lot of ways to evaluate a defense. A lot of numbers. I'm just going to look at two. I don't think there's necessarily the best two, but for today, we're just going to look at points allowed and takeaways, turnovers. And you can see it had some ups and it had some downs, right? 2015, 2016, we're talking about a team that gave up the fifth and sixth best points allowed here. But then in 2020 and 2021, it's in the late 20s. So it seesawed a little bit, but overall, Mike Zimmer, his problem was not on the defense. He never was able to get a relationship going with Kirk Cousins, and that led to his downfall, ultimately, in Minnesota. And you might have remembered this. Where was Kevin Stefanski before Cleveland? He was in Minnesota, and he survived three different head coaching changes. Brad Childress, Leslie Frazier, and Mike Zimmer. They overlapped for six years. It might be a bit awkward, I think, for Zimmer to come and now work underneath Kevin Stefanski? But if Zimmer wants to get back in the NFL and get out of Jackson State, a good place to go is to work for a coach you know pretty well. A coach you overlapped with for six years and you have a relationship with. And you don't, I mean, at this point in his career, Zimmer doesn't want to go somewhere and start all over with new people and a new coach and new everything. He knows what Stefanski wants. They can chat on the phone, and he can give him what he wants while also getting himself back into the mix of the NFL coaching sphere. So I think it could make a lot of sense for Zimmer and Stefanski, who worked well in Minnesota, right? I mean, Stefanski was there before Zimmer arrived, and Zimmer held on to him. A lot of times a new coach comes in, they clean house. Clearly Stefanski had either really good breath or like a really good one-liner when he met Zimmer. He's like, all right, you can stick around. You seem like a cool dude. All of a sudden, maybe the student becomes the master and Stefanski is working above Mike Zimmer. Now, it is Patriots Hate Week here at the channel. I just picked a random Patriots YouTube channel and I decided to clear war on them. So whoever the Patriots press pass is, some old geezers, I think, on YouTube, still trying to figure out how to uh, start and stop a stream. No offense. We are declaring war on you this week. We're trying to catch up to you and beat you in subscribers. We got 4,000 to go. They got a decent leg up on us here. So let's beat them this week in subs by hitting on that big red button if you're looking for Browns YouTube coverage leading into week six. 
All right, next Joe Woods replacement is Vic Fangio. I would go bananas if Vic Fangio was hired by the Cleveland Browns, right? Most recently, the Denver Broncos head coach for three seasons. Another coach that just too defensive-minded that didn't have the quarterback position down, and that led to his downfall between Teddy Bridgewater and Joe, excuse me, um, and well, Joe Flacco, but um, and Drew Locke just couldn't figure it out. He, too, has a ton of experience as a D.C. with the Panthers, the Colts, the Texans, most notably with the 49ers and the Bears. Now, he is the current defensive consultant, excuse me, not coordinator, consultant for the Philadelphia Eagles. Let me make this loud and clear right now. I would love it if Vic Fangio became the defensive coordinator for the Browns. He does amazing things for his defense. Now, he does run a 3-4 defense. That is different than what the Browns operate right now of a 4-3 front. Change might be scary, but his defense, it kicks ass. Let's look what he did with the Denver Broncos. Sticking with that same uh, points allowed and takeaways theme here. First year, 10th in points allowed. 25th in turnovers. Takeaways, turnovers, they can kind of come and go. They can be fluky. A little bit bit element of luck involved in them. But his last year. The year he got fired, his defense was letting up the third fewest points per game in the NFL. That's a defense, keep in mind, that lost Bradley Chubb for much of the year, that traded Von Miller away, that had multiple starters across the board get hurt. So Vic Fangio did a lot of great things with some backups in Denver. Imagine what he could do with Denzel Ward and Miles Garrett and Jeremiah Wusukoromoa. And then in Chicago, where he really made a name for himself and got the head coaching job. Look at 2018. That's the Bears team, the Cody Parkey double doink team. First in points allowed and first in turnovers. You do not find that on the street. The fact that there's a, just a consultant who not too long ago turned a Bears defense that was 24th in points allowed in 2016, his second year there, to first just two years later. That's a serious jump right there. Fanju had some great years, not only with the Bears, but before then, too, with the 49ers. Here's are some of his best hits, right? His best years. Going back to those really good 49ers defensive days um, where he had them second in points allowed, uh, back-to-back seasons, and third in 2013. Turnovers were right there as well. Then with the Bears in 2018, with the Broncos in 2021, Vic Fangio would be my pick if I had to go through any possible coordinator out there. I would love to see Vic Fangio come to Cleveland. All right, next replacement is, you guys have been asking for it. It's Dr. Heat. It's Greg Williams. I'm not too keen on this. I think the game has passed him a little bit. But I will cater to you guys a little bit here because here at Chat Sports. It's all about two-way audience interaction, and I've seen enough chatter over this. So I showed this stat earlier this week. I'll remind our new viewers, if you want to compare Greg Williams to Joe Woods, what Williams did with the Browns and the Jets after leaving Cleveland as their D.C., and Woods in two and a half years, they're not very far apart. Where they are far apart in is the talent level these two coordinators had on their respective defenses. Right? Greg Williams had... I wouldn't even say he had Miles Garrett for one year, a little bit more than that, but in the first year, Miles Garrett was hurt. It was hardly a factor in the season. But Joe Woods has Miles Garrett not even necessarily in his prime or hitting it right now. And this team is letting up 24 points per game. Not much lower than Greg Williams. Just because they both aren't very good doesn't mean that you have to pick one of those two. So I'm passing on Dr. Heat, Greg Williams, medical doctor. Because I don't think it has to be one of those two options. I don't think it has to be Williams or Woods. There there is more. And we'll go through more in just a moment here. But I do want you guys to get involved once again. Do you want Greg Williams to come back to Cleveland? Simple one for yes this time or two for no. So my final Joe Woods replacement option is an under-the-radar name. Because that's tend to be what, what happens when... You make coaching changes that league circles have position coaches that people like. And as fans, we never hear of. But this is a name to keep an eye on. It's Eric Henderson. 
the defensive line coach for the L.A. Rams. So the Athletic, back in the summer, put out a list of top 40, under 40 NFL coaches and execs, and they had Eric Henderson on this list here. So Henderson is the Rams' D-line coach, like I said, also in charge of the run game coordinator position. And keep in mind, a lot of these hires tend to come from names you've never heard of, right? It all of a sudden is the Falcons' DB coach. And you're like, well, I didn't realize, I don't know who that guy was, but I guess A.J. Terrell is pretty good, so it makes some sense here. Plus, everyone just loves Rams coaches. If you work for Sean McVay, you're guaranteed to get a promotion sometime soon, pretty much. Here's what The Athletic said about Henderson. Henderson is the Athletic's choice for 2022. He might be under the radar publicly, but not among his NFL coaching peers who voted him the John Turlin, uh, Tierlink Defensive Line Coach of the Year last season. Henderson received high marks from his peers and his ability to teach and connect with superstars such as Aaron Donald and Von Miller, two grinders like Greg Gaines. His group had 50 sacks in the 2021 regular season, third most in the NFL, but turned it up even more in the playoffs. The Rams had 12 sacks in the postseason, including seven of Burrow in their Super Bowl win. Now, this defensive line this year for the Rams has not been like last year. Towards the bottom of the league in sacks right now with just 10 hurries and pressures. So losing Von Miller has not helped. But I don't think that negates you from being potentially hired. Because remember this. If you want to take one thing away from today's show, it's this. Coaches and GMs, they don't hire stats. They hire people, right? They sit down and they go, you are someone I can work with. You are someone I believe can get the job done. They don't look and go, well, this guy's defense was ranked 8th and this guy was ranked was ninth back in 2019. We got to go with the lower ranking. No, that's not how these hires work. Yeah, having good defense puts you on the map. But you've got to sell yourself in the interview. So don't get caught up too much in, I don't want this guy. His defense sucked two years ago. That's not how these hires work. 